What's that coming over the hill? Is it a Tarask? Red Dice Diaries back with another video. This video is inspired by a conversation that myself and my players had after a recent Jade Punk session of mine where the Tarask was mentioned, during which I expressed in no uncertain terms my immense dislike of the creature. A few days later, the Rogue DM mentioned it briefly in one of her videos, so I thought I'd do a bit of a video myself about why I consider it to be a bit of a non-starter as far as monsters go. But before we start, let me just clarify that I'm talking about the D&D &D version of the Tarask, with two R's, and not the mythological Tarask with a single R. David Daniel Ducker was good enough to remind me of the mythological creature sharing this name, a fearsome and quite interesting dragon-like creature when I mentioned that I was going to be filming this this morning. And I'll put a link to a Wikipedia article on the original mythological creature below since it's quite interesting. But no, in this video, I'm talking about the D&D version of the Tarask, a supposedly dread creature that is the destroyer of worlds whose anger makes the gods themselves tremble. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you get the point. And I'll put a link to the SRD D20 stats for the Tarask below, which is, I think, the 3.5 version. I've already waffled on about what I think makes a good monster in both videos and my written blog. But basically, I love monsters that are based on mythology. Ancient myths and legends that have survived to modern day tend to do so because they have some sort of power or meaning that still resonates with us. So it breaks my poor GMing heart to see a monster like the Tarask, whose mythological inspiration has such great potential, being effectively relegated to being just a big thing with a, a bucket load of hit points that rampages around the world with no real rhyme or reason. So, in order to stop this video degenerating into a complete ramble, I'm just going to list a few reasons why I personally consider the Tarask, the D&D version, to be a bit of a failure as far as monsters go. Now, please keep in mind, this is only my opinion. If you're a Tarask fan, more power to you, but I've no time for the creature myself. Okay, so first of all, the actual look of the monster. I mean, I was introduced in it, first of all, in this book here, which is the AD&D 2nd Edition Monster Manual. And it looked all right in that. It was sort of a, a bestial humanoid figure. But since then, it started to look progressively goofier with this silly jutting out bottom jaw and a ridiculous spiky shell. In my opinion, it looks more like someone has tried to make Bowser out of Mario look scary with only marginal success. I can perhaps see why this shell has been added, to be honest, maybe as a nod to the original mythological inspiration, but it just looks a little bit silly in my opinion. Next, the creature is basically scary because it's a giant. If you're going to make some kind of giant, there's far more interesting ways to make it a bit more interesting than just give it a shed load of, X, of HP, as evinced by some of the less cringeworthy giant creatures in the various monster manuals. Now, according to the D20 SRD version of it, which, as I've said, is based on the 3.5 version, and there'll be a link to that down below, the Tarask has 858 hit points, regeneration, it can swallow people whole, and it can only be killed by reducing it to minus 10 hit points and using a wish or a miracle spell to actually keep it dead. Now, this is just plain old ridiculous. If you want to make a monster unkillable, then just make it unkillable, apart from maybe a few specific weaknesses. There's no need to bother just heaping ridiculous stats on it, which brings me to my next point. What I'm about to read to you is the AD&D Monster Manual description of the Tarask, and it goes like this. It is hoped that the Tarask is a solitary creation, some hideous abomination unleashed by the dark arts or by elder forgotten gods to punish all of nature. The elemental nature of the Tarask leads the few living Tarask experts to speculate that the elemental princes of evil may have been involved with its existence. In any case, the location of the Tarask remains a mystery, as it rarely leaves witnesses in its wake, and nature quickly grows over all remnants of its presence. It's rumoured that the Tarask is responsible for the extinction of at least one ancient civilization, for the records of their last days spoke of a great reptilian punisher sent by the gods to end the world. Now, that sounds fairly evocative and actually quite interesting, until you actually look at it and realise that 
not only does it tell you pretty much nothing at all, and not only is it contradictory, since there's living experts on the Tarask, even though it's apparently very rarely left anyone in its wake. So, And also it suggests that the, one of the most dangerous threats to a fantasy world, where an almost infinite plethora of possibilities are available, is a single big stompy monster that rampages around the globe like some kind of super Godzilla. Now, I don't know about you, but aside from its size and the potential destruction it can cause, a single big stompy monster isn't all that scary. Plus, in a standard D&D setting, with at least a handful of high-level heroes knocking around, I find it unlikely they wouldn't just posse up and lay a smackdown on it so hard that the creature will be scoured from the pages of monster manuals past, present and future. My next point is that as a harbinger of the apocalypse, the Tarask isn't all that great either. As a gem, I can think of all manner of horrific apocalyptic scenarios ranging from the coming of the great old ones, a meteor strike, a plague, zombies, global technological meltdown, rogue AIs, the list is almost endless. However, when I do run a game with apocalyptic overtones, I never sat down and thought, yeah, yeah, that's it. A single giant monster would be the best and scariest way of doing this. And why is that? Well, because a single monster is only a single target. And it's easy to locate and destroy, especially when it's the biggest thing you've ever seen. And yes, I know it's level 20 and it's got a bazillion hit points and you need a wish spell to finally kill it. In most D&D worlds, there are probably at least a few 20th level heroes knocking about. One of them is probably a mage with access to high level magic, i.e. wish spells, or a magic item of some kind. Hell, there's even genies about that can grant wish spells. If the Tarask is rampaging about, merrily destroying the world, what the hell are they up to while this is going on? My next point is that as a creature, unless you go far outside the boundaries of the standard game and really think outside the box. It's pretty much unusual. When was the last time you were in a, get a standard sort of game that involved a Tarask? Most D&D games don't even make it to 20th level, so you'll never get to use the Tarask anyway. However, if you do, that brings me to my next point. It's not actually that interesting. So say you've steered your D&D campaign successfully through the choppy waters of real-life obligation and the rocky shores of GM burnout and the PCs are all at 20th level. You finally bust out the Tarask. It bursts from the ground in all its big jawed glory and starts laying a biblical apocalyptic smackdown on all and sundry. The heroes rush to where the monster is doing its thing and prepare to deal with it. You're now in for just a massive protracted combat that, unless the GM puts in some serious work, or as I say, really thinks outside the box, isn't going to be particularly interesting and it's going to take an awfully long time to run. Now, personally, I can't think of anything more anticlimactic than discussing a campaign afterwards and saying, oh, yeah, the campaign was great. Uh, we stopped the apocalypse. Oh, really? So uh, how did you manage that? Oh, well, it was with a three hour combat against a single enemy. OK, so since I don't like to focus wholly on the negative in my videos, is there anything that can be done about the Tarask to make it even remotely usable and a little bit more interesting? Well, handily, yes, there is. The D&D Tarask, as it exists in its present form, is far better as part of your game world's history and as a threat than it is as an actual monster. I can see a campaign where the players come across evidence of previously destroyed civilizations and they have to rush to stop the predicted rise of the creature, lest their own civilization suffer the same fate. However, if you do run a campaign like that, then you have to face the facts that if the players fail to stop the rise of the creature, then you may have to carry through on your threats. If this happens, I would suggest doing one of the following. Either lower the stats of the creature and have it as a group of creatures rather than a single monster. This makes it more difficult to target and can lead to more interesting scenarios than just one massive fight. Two, give the creature more intelligence and make it a, a more cunning foe. This would probably work better if it wasn't quite so massive. Three, perhaps make the Tarask a hidden enemy or a curse. Maybe particularly evil people become the Tarask when the apocalypse occurs and that this is going to bring about the world's end. Or perhaps the Tarask is an incorporeal force that possesses existing creatures, transforming them into giant engines of destruction. There you've added an extra level. You don't just have to beat the giant creature it's inhabiting 
currently, you also have to defeat this spiritual entity. Otherwise, it'll just move on to something else. This might also explain its longevity in a campaign and how it survived against these mighty heroes. They come in, lay the smack down on it. Oh, the Taras defeated back home for tea and crumpets. And the spirit swipes off in the silence, biding its time, possessing another vessel until it gathers the strength to once more rise again and threaten the world. Four, you could make it something entirely different. Perhaps the Tarask is actually a virus named after its creator or something similar. Five, give the creature some weaknesses, perhaps a weakness to prayer or charms like the original mythological inspiration. Or at least remove the silly thing about a wish being needed to kill it. Six, which will be my personal preference, perhaps change it to something more like the mythological original. If I was going to run it, given that the original myth version was a draconic creature, I would have it be some sort of ancient draconic figure from the past, perhaps with some power over its descendants. A bit like in Dragonlance, that intends to use its brethren and its formidable powers to wipe the world clean. With this, you could have themed encounters throughout your campaign, leading to a final confrontation with a much more interesting, in my opinion, version of the creature. So there you go. There's my opinion on the Tarask and what can be done to at least make it slightly interesting. If you have any opinions or thoughts on this, you can drop them in the comments box down below or hit me up in the Google Plus links. I really do enjoy reading what you write. I hope you've enjoyed this video. You'll consider clicking on like and subscribe by clicking on the red dice up there in the corner. And until I see you next time, take care and happy gaming.